Welcome back guys. I have some exciting news this time. We're still waiting on the final permits to come through from the city, but we did get an initial round of review from them. And based on that, the architect says we can move forward with starting to frame out the walls upstairs. And that means we're gonna actually start to see all the rooms take shape. Very excited about that. So we're gonna show all the framing and do a walkthrough with a floor plan, all that sort of thing. But first, I gotta correct the mistake I made a few videos ago. When I replaced the subfloor boards, I didn't glue the new boards down. <laughs> a bunch of people pointed that out in the comments and, and they were right that it could possibly squeak and be noisy if I didn't do that. Now, some of the subfloor boards are only screwed down. So I'm gonna pull those up put construction adhesive down before we frame the walls over them. Behind me over there, they're actually throwing up the framing fast and furious. We're gonna flip this camera around it and, and show that. This is exciting to see the rooms taking shape. I know I'm probably gonna get questions as to why going with these metal studs over two by fours. We're kind of gonna actually do a hybrid approach. The metal studs, the guys who are framing, just like using them better, they're easier. But uh, what I'm gonna do is go back in areas where I think I'm gonna be attaching things to the walls, and you can just slot two by fours right into the tracks. So I've got some wood studs in there. Makes things easy when I'm hanging things on the walls or doing built-ins. So now that most of the rough framing is done up here, uh, let's just do a quick walkthrough. I, I think I haven't showed you guys the revised floor plan where there's been a couple changes. So the first thing here is the uh, YouTube studio. So this room is going to be about 14 by 23 feet and just will be, you know, where I work, edit videos, can shoot videos, do nice soundproofing, everything like that. So we're moving down the hall here and on my left, we're just gonna have a walk-in storage closet. Behind me over there is the third bedroom, which we're going into right now. So this bedroom is about 10 by 15 feet. There's the skylights up there, which you can see are providing a lot of light. So the third bedroom and the second bedroom, which you can kind of see through these closets here, they're just gonna be guest rooms. I'll probably have like Murphy beds so that I can fold them up and use them for other purposes when I don't have guests staying here. So coming out of the third bedroom, we're gonna walk by that storage closet area again, head down the hallway, sort of towards the main living room and we're, we're passing on the right, the second bedroom, which is identical or I, I guess a mirror image of the third bedroom. They're both 10 by 15. Right across the hall from both the guest bedrooms over here, we've got the guest bathroom. And it's gonna be kind of a longer, narrower, five foot by 11 foot bathrooms. I think we're gonna have a tub on this end. Probably have room for a double vanity here. I'm not sure, we'll see. Continuing down the hallway, we have something I'm really excited about. I've never had an actual laundry room before. I think I might do like a side by side with like a countertop for folding clothes and stuff. It's about a 10 foot by five foot room. Going past the laundry room, continuing down the hallway, over here, we've got that opening with that big mechanical lift. And a lot of people have commented on this one. It is super cool. We've got to kind of cover it up. We're going to drywall over it, put floor in to fill the hole for permit purposes. That doesn't mean we might not figure something out down the road. Moving on into da -da -da, the primary bedroom. It's going to be about 16 by 15. So we decided to go with his and her side-by-side -side closets, which are over right over here. They're each, I think, five feet deep by seven feet seven and a half feet wide. So on the other side over here, this big space is gonna be the master bathroom. And there's gonna be double barn doors leading from the master bedroom sort of into the master bathroom. So it all kind of flows together as one big open space. So I'm continuing down the hallway now past the master bathroom and down here, I can't go any further because there's gonna be the stairs right there. We showed cutting those out in the last video and you might notice there's something colorful down there. Oh yeah, yeah, there's more art been added since last time and we're gonna show that that's coming up in a minute. So we'll just have to, for now, cut through the master bathroom and hop on down Woo. 
into the main living room and kitchen area. Kitchen design is something I've started working on. Generally, I think I'm gonna go with an L-shaped kitchen with an island. And oh, I guess I forgot to mention, one of the big changes is we had to flip-flop the location of the utility room and powder room uh, to make room for the stairs. And then we also had to kind of change the size of the bathrooms and hallways a little bit since the last time. So if you're paying close attention to the floor plans, you will notice some changes. Now, before we get further, I wanna take a quick second and here from this video sponsor, NordVPN. In case you missed it, last time when I talked about Nord, a VPN is a virtual private network and it encrypts and protects all your internet activity so nobody, including your ISP, can see what you're doing. Now I know none of my viewers ever do anything online that they would be embarrassed about or really care about anyone else knowing. Nope, no secret. So why should you care? All internet service providers, including the one that you're using to watch this video right now, are required by law to collect all kinds of data about your browsing history, everything you're looking at, your websites that you visit, and so on. And there are laws that require them in certain cases to turn over all that data to the government. But when you use a VPN, you prevent your ISP from collecting all this data in the first place, so there's nothing for them to share. Another great thing about NordVPN is it allows you to spoof your IP address. Or in normal human speak, it allows you to appear as if you're located in an entirely different place than you actually are. Loki system answered. By spoofing your address to be from somewhere else, you can actually access entirely new content. So let's say you spoof your IP address and now you're in the UK instead of the US. You can access all of UK Netflix's content. Right now, Nord is offering a 68% off deal to all my subscribers, which works out to just $3.71 a month when you sign up at nordvpn.com slash industrial. Plus they're throwing in one additional month free. So if you've been thinking about a VPN or like what you've heard, head over to that link in the description. Much love to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into it. So today while I'm doing some boring stuff, little 3D modeling, designing the kitchen, I've actually got an artist from Fayetteville, Arkansas here, Sasha Tiger. He's gonna be painting this wall and we gotta cover the CNC machine up so it doesn't get messed up. Can't, can't screw it up before I even learn how to use it. Oh, dude, oh, dude, the clean side, dude, messed up nicely. There you go. Originally, I had this idea, but we had a little bit of an obstacle in the way, so we're going to modify it a little bit and kind of change it up and go really more with the flow of the space. What, what are you doing to change it? We are going to wing it, thank God for iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I'm not gonna give away too much of Sasha's video here, but this one technique was so cool I had to share it. He's got this roll of transfer tape. It's clear transfer tape, so he can just tape it onto the wall right over his marker sketch, then use an X-Acto knife to cut along the lines and the transfer tape create holes, basically a large stencil right on the wall that he can then spray paint into to get to those sort of details in the painting that are just far too small for uh, a can of spray paint to do. You gonna paint in here? A little bit. Oh man. Dude, dude, hug it out, hug it out. This is unbelievable, man. Oh, holy. <laughs> so, Sasha just finished up the mural. I'm giving y'all a little taste here, but he is actually starting a YouTube channel, pretty much brand new. I know he's putting a ton of work into it. If his videos are anything like his art is, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be awesome. So go over there, his channel, Tiger Sasha. There'll be a link in the description. Check it out, show some love. Thanks, bro. Awesome. Appreciate you Appreciate doing it, this. Appreciate it, man. It's an awesome experience. Now on to the next phase. The framing crew just finished everything upstairs and now they're about to start framing out the wall that's gonna separate the first floor workshop from the entry hallway that's gonna lead you upstairs to the living area. After they finish framing, I'm gonna come back, hang up the drywall on the inside wall only so that I can hang up all my wall control storage on that wall, but it'll leave the back side of the wall open so the electrician can get in there and do his thing. 
Oh yeah, and we gotta clear a few things out to make, make room for the guys before they start. Move the camera over here for this because I'm assembling a mystery tool that I can't really talk about, but I'm pretty excited about, but can't show it now. Now they're framing. So y'all might remember the first thing I did when I bought this building was the train wreck bathroom makeover that was in the workshop area. I didn't put walls in because we were just gonna do that when we were framing everything else out and now is the time to frame it. So we're about to do that. Antonio just got here with his guys that are loading the drywall in and do something different. I'm basically gonna be a subcontractor of his today. I've done drywall once many years ago. I'm a little rusty and don't remember much, so hopefully gonna learn a little bit here. What do you think are the odds? Are you betting? How much money you put on this fitting? <laughs> Not much, you don't have any faith. All right, we'll see. On that side. Nice. Pull loose on that side, but Not bad. I got a not bad, so yeah, it fits. It's loose, but this is rough. It's rough framing. That's what joint compound's for. I'm loving this little rigid drill. I mean, this thing is, so tiny. And this is 18 volts. So maybe over in my, my Instagram stories, I will do a comparison later of this size, like the space this can fit into compared to a 12 volt. Definitely digging it. I'll link to the description for this tool too. Only thing left now is just to put a second layer of drywall up so that we can meet the fire code. And I'm not gonna bore y'all with doing the same thing over on camera. We'll do that off camera and we'll be right back. All right, mission drywall is accomplished. So after we get a coat of paint on that, I can get all the crap that's just strewn all over this workshop up on that wall, organizing my wall control panels. I'm super excited to actually just get this place functional. And all that will, of course, be in the next video. Also, hopefully by then we'll have the permits and the plumbing will get started. And so, yeah, we'll be doing more things with the renovation. I mean, I know you guys can't wait, but I really can't wait because <laughs> I wanna move in. Oh, and one more thing. I gotta thank all you guys who commented in the last video about the paint sprayer. I mean, it was my most commented on video ever. Insane. I was blown away. Wagner Paint Sprayers was also blown away. So they sent me the paint sprayer. I'll be using that in the next video. Thank you again for that. This community is just amazing. That's it for this time, and I'll see you next time.